You're listening to the audio-only version of Cocktails with Cav, the popular video cast streamed live only on X. Follow us here on Spotify or on X at Cav Literature. It was about nine o'clock on a Thursday when I got back to my office. It was a dark and stormy night in New Orleans with so much rain that the streets became rivers as bad as the mighty Mississippi. I'd been challenged to a Hawaiian shirt contest by the crime fiction lover's indie novel of the year award winner, and I was feeling anxious. As a great British author friend of mine, Gregory Alexander Sharp once said in his novel, Killing Cure, available on Amazon and other fine retailers, the room smelled of cigarettes, booze, and old conspiracies. I pour myself a cocktail with some old whiskey and knew what I had to do. I got to it. Oh, how is everybody doing this Thursday? What a great show. I'm so excited. We are, we are going to have the crime fiction lovers, indie novelist of the year 2023 as our guest talk about his incredible book scratching the flint quick housekeeping again please check our merch page great swag great way to support the show and as always please consider supporting the show at our buy me a coffee function cheap cup of coffee is all it takes so we can keep bringing you great indie authors entertainers and artists well i took up too much time with my noir intro but i had to do it it was awesome (laughs) well i thought so anyway but ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage, from Chicago, Illinois, the incredible author, Vern Smith. Oh, Vern, thanks so much, man. I'm so glad you could finally make it on the show, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well, George. Thank you very much for having me. Happy to be here. Uh, yeah, how, how's, the, how's the weather up there in Chicago? Not, not good. Uh, for the first time in about four days, I was able to walk around the block Ugh. this morning. And, uh, you know, otherwise, it's, it's been so cold it hurts. Um, <laughs> we've been having a lot of fires, and uh, I'm, the, um, I'm the main snow shoveler around here. It's probably a Canadian thing. Um, you know, if we don't, if we don't uh, clear our ice, yeah. we're not nice and clear, clearing, clearing our ice will get fined or sued. Oh, so, geez. You know, so I'm the I'm the first guy out there when it snows, and uh, you know, probably a little bit, a little bit too old to be going analog with it. I think, <laughs> I think this is the last year with me and just a shovel. I, I think we're going to have to get a machine next. Year. You, you need to do like New Hampshire does and just uh, pledge some political candidates a, a group of ten people for a coffee or something, and they'll and leave some shovels out by the step. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a much better idea. I, it I, works, getting, right? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I'm 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 getting to the point in my life where you know somebody else has got to do it, and I'll watch. <laughs> that's right. supervise well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> with all your experience. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm I'm going into supervisor mode next year. <laughs> that's it. Well, I I am glad you could finally join us, Vern. We had uh, I, I'd say if ladies and gentlemen, we, I met Vern on X. He's a great member of the writers community and uh, wonderful engage with and actually we're both Hawaiian shirt aficionados I think we said we were going to have a Hawaiian shirt competition for tonight's show and uh what, what you got on over there Vern I'm, I came to win with my, my well, classic I know, I know Ronnie you did, uh, feel, buddy yeah I, I that is that is a thing of beauty George and I can't, can't <laughs> compete with that I am um, sort of an amateur aficionado with it I'm wearing a Columbia shirt with um uh, sailfish on it. I'll give you a little bit of a better look there. Uh, um, it's and, it's always a classic, tasteful, tasteful yes, classic. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and, and you know, I I, I I like my wine shirts very much, but uh, what what you have there, I've never seen before. That it, it seems like a one of a kind to me, and. Uh, I am a little bit green looking at it. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I, I'm in love with it. I, I sleep sometimes in it. No. <laughs> well, be careful. Be careful. That's save that for good. You have to save that for good, George. That's it. But geez, man, Vern, well, tell us a little bit. I, man, we love to get the viewers uh, to 
to know our, our indie creators and authors and, and maybe a little of your background you want to share and, and just, yeah, I'd love to get to know you because, man, you do some great work in the crime fiction genre and uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you probably have an interesting background that led you, led you to writing in that genre in the first place. Well, yeah, absolutely. Just just for start, just for starters, um, you know, I, I do write crime fiction. Um, I, I consider myself a, a writer. I, I don't think I can write anything, but I can write most things. Um, crime fiction in particular, I, um, I worked as a, as a reporter um, early in my life and uh, spent a lot of time uh, covering cops and whatnot. And, and so some of this stuff, I, I came across or was inspired to do it at that time and um, uh, sort of got out of uh, serious journalism in the early 2000s and, and started working on some manuscripts. Uh, got some other books out, um, some other novels in particular, uh, The Green Ghetto uh, and Under the Table. The most recent thing is, is Scratching the Flint and um, it's something that, that was put out in 2023. Uh, it's been called a scathing indictment of the justice system. It's, it's also been called uh, satire, and I, I like to think it's just hyper-realism with some moments of comic relief in there. And uh, essentially, it, it revolves around um, a stolen, uh, a ring for stolen vintage cars and, and, and vintage parts. And um, uh, essentially, uh, push comes to shove. Uh, there's there's an investigation. Um, charges are pending, and crown witnesses end up going uh, not just murdered, but but mocked and murdered. Uh, my main protagonist is a detective, young detective, called Cecil Bolin, and one of his childhood friends is mixed up in this, and the the first person we meet, and somebody who does get mocked and murdered and uh cecil's a fraud cop he's not a homicide cop and and so he's watching sort of as the system sputters he's seeing lots of evidence of institutional failure issues around influence gatekeeping and freelancing which is exactly what cecil ends up doing uh he starts conducting his own vigilante investigation outside of uh, the knowledge of his partner and superiors. And the story kind of um, spirals into, uh, in, into a violent situation and uh, um, ultimately a situation uh, where there is vengeance, but there's not much justice. Yeah, I tell you, yeah, it sounds like a, a, a great read for sure. And, and you got, um... Uh, yeah, it won an award, didn't it? We... Yes, yes, we had we had a very lovely surprise in December. I got a phone call at four o'clock in the morning from from England, and uh, it it won a uh, crime fiction lovers uh, best indie novel of 2023, and and so you know just delighted. I, I mean, I don't get into this to win awards, and it's I haven't won a writing award since 1989 so i haven't been holding up much hope for that and, and it came as a this one came as a complete surprise for me but it you know anything that gets more eyes on the book it's it's uh it's a tough go for everyone in this day and age and and particularly indies so so i was you know i was delighted that that the book got some attention and i i was you know it was was happy that, that it was obviously resonating with some people and, and resonated with the uh, the publication itself, Crime Fiction Lover, and, and the readers of Crime Fiction Lover. So, you know, it was, it was a great day, and, and we had a big party here, and um, um, a nice nice little pre-Christmas treat for us. Oh, I, I bet. I tell you what, congratulations. That's that's worth a toast for sure. What you, what you having over there uh, in Chicago with cocktails with Cav? <laughs> okay, well, I'm I'm having a, uh, and I'm already well into it, as you can see, I've got a backup can. I'm having a peanut butter porter, 6.1% from Distill Brewery. Uh -huh. I guess that's Distill Brewery. And I'm having it in my vintage Toronto Maple Leafs mug, which I think was made for stubbies. 
Oh yeah, well it was it was a destiny for the show. That's for sure. That's a <laughs> yes, yes, it was. yes, it was. Good peanut butter porter. I I don't, I don't think you can go wrong there. <laughs> No, I haven't had a bad one yet, and you know, particularly this time of year, it's uh, it's 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 the comfort food of drinks. That, and, yeah, uh, it's a timeless classic, like the shirt, Vern. That's yes, the- <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> well, I tell you, you, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really excited uh, about your award because you're right. That's kind of uh, for the indie crime genre that. That's becoming one of those uh, crown princes of awards. That's for sure. That you that you received. Uh, are you are you working on, on anything new or? I am. I, I I'm. Has, it's it's so early in the process. I'm I'm afraid to say much about it. When I was a kid, you know, I would I would start a book and and you know start shooting my mouth off two pages in. Say you know this is going to be a novel. I'm going to finish it next year, and then you know it would take me. 15 more years to wrap it up um so so i don't want to get too far into it but it is it's something that's that's new for me it's uh i haven't written in the first person um since the 90s in terms of fiction and it's something that sort of demanded i write in the first person so it's it's a little bit different that way and it's also different in that these these three novels that i put out um um i'm i'm told there is something that that sort of uh commanded to be or demanded to be written in the first person so that's what i'm doing and um it's it's also it's not a it's not something i would consider to be a genre story it's it's basically closer to what i was writing when i started writing fiction which is basically um the stories of the city in which crimes did occur um but it's not a genre story in terms of being a detective story or or something along those lines um, it's uh, you know it's more of a coming of age thing than anything else, and so I'm I'm looking forward to sort of stretching my wings and uh, doing something a little different. I don't you know I don't anticipate doing series or anything like that. Once I um, deal with a character, you know I'm pretty much done with them, and uh, so so this is something that's that's you know it's 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 different than what I've, I've I've done recently and and I like to do that I like I like my stuff to have range and um, um, you know try new things I don't so, want to keep writing the same book over and over again so you just you know murder your characters is what you is that what you yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty ruthless in that way I've, I've killed off some characters um, that that readers have liked and it, it just it gets to the point in the story um, where, you know, they've run the course of their usefulness and, and sort of that's it for them. And so I'm, I'm not afraid to kill off a good guy. And, and I've done that before and I'll do it again. And, uh, but, but this is <laughs> no remorse, <laughs> yeah, no remorse, no remorse. But, but, but this is, you know, this is, I, I don't, I don't think there's going to be many killings in this new one. It's, it's, I think it's more of a, of a uh, you know uh, a, a lower drug lower lower middle class drugstore cowboy type of thing that it is um, you know uh, a, a big um, big show of murder and if that's what you're looking for I mean you know grab scratching the flint uh, there's plenty of killing in there and there's pr- plenty of killing in the green ghetto so yeah um, I've I've done that and uh, you know this this more the new thing more than anything revolves around uh, a young person stealing a suit on Young Street in Toronto. So uh, it's, it's more petty crime than it, than it is, um, you know, people getting necklaced. Oh, well, it, it's, uh, yeah, no, and, and that's, you're going to have to complete the work now. We're going to hold you to it now that you said. All right. <laughs> but, uh, but crime, yeah, I, I love the genre uh, of crime fiction too and and it's what's your technique when you're you're writing when you were writing your works you know is it a you have the crime and and in other words the great work that you've done it's it there tends to be a flow of clues and and discovery and crime and what's your technique as you lay out how you're gonna go with it with 
Well, I, I did, um, I, I, I used to be what they call a pantser. And, um, you know, would, would sort of write and without an outline and, and write myself into corners and then write myself out, which, and there's something to be said for that because if you don't know what's going to happen next, you know, there's a pretty good chance the reader's not gonna know what's gonna happen next. And that's, you know, one of the things that, that I shoot for. Um, I, I did do, I did a, a essay. I, I, was, I, I received a Ontario Arts Council grant to do a essay on pop culture and detective fiction, um, you know, about 20 years ago. And when I was researching that, I, I was fortunate enough to interview Mickey Spillane. And um, one of the things he said to me is, know the end before you even get started. And so in Scratching the Flint, I did know how it was gonna end. And it sort of made things easier for me in terms of filling up the sandwich and, and writing to that end. And um, so, so you know, that, that was, I, I knew where I was going um, from, from the get-go. I knew where I was gonna end up. And, and so then it was just a matter of, of sort of paving a map um, to getting there. In, in terms of in terms of process, um, it was also very interesting to me. I, I had I had started this, um, you know, about 15, 17 years ago, and um, found it in a hard copy. It was a seventeen thousand word novella, and I, I looked at it, and you know, there was a lot of things I liked about it, and I felt that it could be a full length manuscript, full length novel. And um, I got back into it right at the beginning of the of the pandemic, and um, you know I, I'm looking at this at the beginning and reading all the you know horrifying coverage of it, and I'm thinking you know you you could be dead in three weeks. Don't censor. Don't censor yourself. Just tell this story and and let it slide. And don't worry about the consequences. And so, you know, that, that's what I did. Um, you know, to tell you the truth, when it, when it came out, I, you know, was a little bit, a little bit fearful of that. But, uh, uh, you know, the book's been reviewed, uh, the book's been read, the book's been vetted, the, the, the book's been awarded. So I, I, I feel good about that. And, and, you know, hopefully I can get back into a similar space now to finish the next one. Uh, because I, I do think, you know, we, we live in a time um, where there are a lot of moral panics um, about, you know, who's writing about what and what you can say and what you can't say, uh, which is really not, not helpful. And I, I think in regards to this book, I totally overcame all that. And, and so uh, experience is, is helpful. And, and, you know, I think when I, I, I get into the next one in earnest, um, you know, I'll be, I'll, 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 be in, I'll be of that mindset again. Well, and I tell you, yeah, and it's, uh, I hope everybody does get to check out the work because obviously, you know, it is, it's, it, it's like you said, scratching the flint, just, uh, <clears throat> you, you went at it on it and, and, you know, it is a coveted award. You know, the Crime Fiction Lover Book of the Year for 2023. I, I, I have to tell you, Vern, I'm, I'm impressed and just so glad that excited for you. You know, well, well th thanks very much. Um, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of people, a lot of people are very sweet and reached out. You know, in terms of, in terms of my family, um, my nieces and nephews, you know, were probably proud of me for the first time. <laughs> my adult life and uh um you know there's a lot of a lot of uh sweet um a lot, of, a lot of sweet things were said to me um from people who are you know from people whose whose opinions matter to me and uh there there aren't very many of those but there are some and um you know it was it was um it was nice to win it for myself and it was nice to win it for them and it was nice to win it for the people I work with at, at Run Amok Books, uh, Gary Anderson, the publisher there, the uh, managing editor, who's uh, shown 
a great deal of support for my work and uh, Krista Winsheimer, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the um, best damn editor in in the small press. And, uh, um, you know, like anything else, is a team award. And, and so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted that, that this was given to us and earned. Um, and, and, but it's very much, it's very much a team award. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people over the years that helped me. A lot of people made me better and a lot of people supported me. Oh, that, that is so awesome, Vern. Well, I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, like I said earlier, met Vern on X. He, he's a great member of the writers community and, and j- j- fun, to, fun to chat with, that's for sure, and interact with. Uh, so please make sure you go give him a follow over on X. Uh, he's at Real Vernon Smith. Uh, his handle's right there on the screen underneath this video shot for you. Uh, and also, please do. Uh, See ya. Got the alcohol problem with the camera backwards, but <laughs> up here, right here, we've had the banner all show long. Please go visit uh, the website. It'll bring you straight to Vern's work, Scratching the Flint. Again, like we said, uh, like he had mentioned, won that prestigious award for crime fiction, uh, Indie Crime Fiction of the Year award, right? In December, you said they, they announced, huh? Yeah, it was. I believe it was December seventh. Oh, awesome! So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, please take a chance. QR code will take you straight to the website and uh, where the book's available, and check out Vern's work. And uh, and and Vern, you got anything else you're plugging, man? I I, I appreciate uh, you. Definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, well, we uh, we put out uh, in 2022 um, a crime fiction anthology called Jacked. And that that won an award as well. Um, I was the editor of that. Um, say the curator, uh, Krista Winsheimer, uh, helped me on that as well. And um, that won a Chinoski Award um, from the Independent Fiction Alliance. And so uh, that's also something I was very proud of. Um, it, it was a different type of thing for me. I always sort of wondered you know, what I'd be able to do with a, a crime fiction anthology. And I, I'm not talking about my own work when I say this, I'm talking about the 21, 20 wonderful writers of Jacked. And uh, um, what they brought to the table was, was just outstanding. And I will put that against any crime fiction anthology that's been published since. Oh, awesome. And where can people find that? That's also a run amok crime product, and uh, you can find that wherever fine books are sold. Ah, I, li- I like it. It's smooth. You got that down, Vern. I like that. <laughs> Where- wherever prestigious award-winning books are sold, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Vern, again, man, I, like I said, I'm, I'm glad we had our, our Hawaiian shirt competition, our, our drink together. And talk about your great work. And ladies and gentlemen, please go give Vern a follow over on X at Real Vernon Smith. And again, please go visit his website and check out Scratching the Flint, the award-winning crime fiction novel. Vern, appreciate you, man. I appreciate you a lot, buddy. Well, George, thank you very much for having me. And, and I know you're you're a veteran, and I, so I just want to say as well, thank you very much for your service. Ah, no, no problem. I appreciate it too, sir. Thank you very much. And cheers to you, Vern. Open Chicago and live from New Orleans. We appreciate you. Cheers, George. Thank you very much. <laughs>